to pray. All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to PC 314 Media and Technology and Ministry. This is lecture number two. We are going to pray together and then get started. Can I ask uh, somebody to pray? Kanan, can you pray? And we will start, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll pray. Our Heavenly Father, I can, uh, thank you for this wonderful time. Lord, uh, give us good understanding about your uh, subject. Lord, give us a good connectivity uh, to um, enjoy an un un <coughs> uninterrupted uh, lesson, Lord. Lord, uh, give uh, help everybody to join quickly uh, to study, Lord. Lord, uh, give us a good understanding of your word and uh, your wisdom, Lord. Lord, uh, help us to understand easily so we could use in our mission, uh, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Karan. All right, good morning and welcome everyone once again. Uh, this course on media and technology uh, is uh, meant to be just a, a practical course. Uh, and I'm speaking uh, mainly just to share information that you can use uh, in your ministries uh, in the area of media and technology. And uh, like we said yesterday in the very first lecture, uh, you will be having, you know, specialists, uh, IT people or media people doing the work, but still um, you will be involved in a lot of the decision making and also you need to provide oversight. That means to watch over what they are doing, uh, ask the right questions. Uh, and uh, sometimes you may, they will, they will be looking up to you uh, to make certain decisions. And, uh, and so uh, it's good to have some information that, so that you, it'll help you in this process. Right? And so I'm going to be touching on various things in the area of media and technology, which will be useful, especially uh, looking at it from a Christian leader perspective. If you are leading a ministry, leading a church, and um, you want to, your, 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 your organization, your church or your ministry is going to be using media and technology and then as a leader, you know, having some understanding uh, of these things will be useful as you interact with your IT team or media team and uh, and are involved in the decision making process. So we're coming from that perspective. Right. So let's pick up from where we paused yesterday. I will uh, share the PDF. And. Um, yeah, so yesterday uh, we did a little introduction on the current trends definition, and then we went into the second chapter. Maybe, maybe we're talking about digital engagement strategy. That means um, you need to think how you are going to engage people inside the church and outside the church, right? Now, uh, I'm just making a comment here, especially given the political scenario that we are facing in India. Um, and I, I, I don't think, I mean, okay, let me say it like this. The government in the state of Karnataka, that is where we are, uh, is trying to push in some, you know, what they call as anti-conversion laws. And uh, these laws, uh, now the anti-conversion laws are existing in, a, I think, uh, 10 states or across India, but they're not really enforced in, 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 in a very big way. But the laws that are, they're trying to bring into our state, the state of Karnataka, are, it's like a big, big net that anybody can get trapped in that. That means any form of sharing the gospel uh, with anybody under any situation can be considered as an attempt to convert somebody. And uh, they are trying to, you know, the, 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 the laws that they're trying to bring is like, even if there's an allegation, it means three years in jail, no questions. 
you know, and you, until you prove your innocence or, or it could end up in 10 years in jail. So th these kinds of laws they're trying to bring, uh, of course, they've not yet been passed in the legislative council. And even if they, if they are passed, they will definitely be challenged in the Supreme Court. So uh, the likelihood of these things being enacted is, I don't know, almost very slim. But the point I want to get across is, you know, uh, with things around us changing, we also have to be very thoughtful about how we are using these technologies. Uh, we, you know, and especially in a, in, a, in a political scenario, that's like what I mentioned, we also have to, you know, we have to think through our strategies. We can't just simply go and do things and then end up in trouble, you know? So we have to be careful. So thinking through on a strategy, whether you're serving people inside the church or people outside the church, uh, it has to be a very thoughtful approach when they're using media and technology and also take into account the environment uh, within which you are working and, and, and influencing people. Now, uh, so yesterday we stopped all, all the way till here. We went all the way here saying, look, uh, when you are evaluating the progress of your digital engagement, that means you're engaging with people using media and technology digitally, uh, we need to be asking the right questions to know whether we're really being effective. Uh, don't get caught up with these vanity metrics. You know, how many people uh, liked your post or uh, how many people are subscribing or how many views you're having. Uh, these numbers are okay, but they don't tell you the real story. Okay. So you need to ask other kinds of questions to know if uh, what you are doing is really making a difference in the lives of people. So you've got to ask real questions, right? Um, some of the examples, I mean, it's just uh, some examples of how you can digitally engage people, you know, is, uh, is for example, uh, suppose the, uh, there was, you know, in church, uh, you were giving out cards to, you know, like usually what we do is when, when there are newcomers, uh, we tell them to fill out a contact card uh, and say, please tell us, you know, your name. And so sometimes if that, if you find that that's not being very effective, people are not filling it out, then you can think of something else like, hey, if we give them a free book uh, online, an e-book, e maybe it will incentivize them, maybe give them an incentive to go and fill up uh, an online contact card. Just say, these are just examples. I'm not saying you have to do it. I'm just saying th this is the way you can think, you know, that, hey, if you give them something free online, maybe they'll fill up, they will enter their name and, and mobile number and email address and then take the book, maybe. Right? Or uh, another idea is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, because you're finding, if you're finding, uh, a, a lot of topics that uh, the children want to, uh, that we need to talk to children about, uh, you know, you could have a online uh, discussion once a week uh, on, on to topics that are related to kids, you know, what they like to talk about and uh, things that they uh, are interested in or topics for adults, you know, uh, things that they may be interested in things like that. So you can get people online. And of course, a lot of us are already doing a lot of things online. So uh, this may be something we are already doing. Um, or you can think about uh, changing your website to target a different kind of audience, uh, positioning your website in a different way so that uh, it can reach people. You know, if, if the people that you want to reach are uh, seekers mainly, then you position your online presence to attract those kinds of people. Or if you want to do something to help marriages, you can do a podcast uh, to talk about marriage and help people that way. Or you can even do an online marriage retreat. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of couples can participate. Whereas, uh, uh, if you do it uh, in person, and especially the situations we are in now, 
uh, it's difficult to do in person, but you know, something online. So uh, just these are just ideas that different churches have used and people, you know, that we can, if you start thinking uh, differently, how, you know, we want to target these kinds of people. So let's do something like this. You know, you can think of ways to reach people. And sometimes uh, I just put an exercise here. I'm not expecting you to do it, but just, just think about it. if you want to target teens and young adults. So in this age range, so suppose you want to target them. What would you do? Well, uh, you want to identify the platforms where are these where these people are. You know, so in your region or the region you're targeting, or you know, where are these teens? What what platforms are these teens, young adults using? So to find out what platforms you can go online, there's a lot of research data. And now this data is about uh, what US teens are using. And uh, you know they'll tell you that they're using these platforms. And so then what you do is then you need to develop a strategy that engages teens and young adults in those platforms, right? So like based on some facts and research, you can develop a strategy, okay? So just to think along those lines. Now, what we're going to do is I want to get into some of the details of how you go about engaging people using these platforms, okay? I want to go into some details on that and give you some practical tips or ideas to keep in mind when you start doing these things. So today we will just cover one. We'll just talk about websites. Okay, so I've given you the PDF. Now, you know, as a church or as a ministry, having a website uh, is all, uh, I would say it's, it's almost necessary right, these days. Now, uh, before, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe prior to 20 years ago, uh, you know, people used to have brochures. You know, we used to print out brochures, which will give people some basic information about our church or ministry and we'll hand this out. You know, when people come in, you give out a brochure, uh, a printed thing. Now, brochures still have certain value, uh, but not every, today, you know, many people have moved away from traditional brochures to just a website. Uh, it's cheaper. Uh, you don't have to, waste paper and ink and money on printing. And uh, it can be accessed by anybody, anytime, anywhere, right? So it doesn't depend on you handing out a brochure to somebody. They just can find you online and uh, so on. And very interestingly, if you have a church website that is done well, you can actually attract the kind of people you want to come into your church. So I can say, like for APC, uh, of course, we don't have in-person services, but when we do have in-person services, uh, a good number of people find us online. Like they search for a church in Bangalore, uh, they will find us online, and then they will come to church. So it's a passive, I mean, you know, we are not making a lot of effort to go and bring these people to church. No, they find us online and then they come, right? And then we are trying to do this not only for our church in Bangalore, but we had, we had, our one website, apcw.org, has also been set up in such a way that if somebody searches for a spiritual church in Nasik or spiritual church in Kohima, or you know they search for a spiritual church in uh, in uh, Bangalore or a spiritual church in Kalyan, you know, the places where we have outreach, they will find our website will come up there. So the same website is helping, you know, bring people to our outreach churches as well. So it's been done that way, right? So one website is serving not just the church in Bangalore, but it's also serving our outreach churches around the country uh, because when people search in their region, they will find, uh, you know, the link to that particular church. And I show, share with you how to do it. So really, when you build a website, there are certain things to keep in mind when you build a website for a church, for your church or ministry, okay? 
uh, don't just you know don't just create a website and say okay I got a website up. The point is, is it serving the purpose? And um, and there are certain things you need to keep in mind to make sure that your website is actually serving the purpose, right? Now, how do you go setting about a website? And of course, you would use the help of some uh, uh, you know people, a web developer and a graphics designer, and they, they will get them to help you build your website. But as a Christian leader or a pastor, some of the things you need to keep in mind is uh, you know the platform on where you want to build your website. So typically we we would say you know use a content management system. Right, rather than developing a website from scratch. So usually uh, these days, nobody builds a website from scratch. They use a platform, a content management system. Right? Uh, one of the, uh, what we use at APC is we use Joomla. This is an open source, meaning this whole platform is for free. Right? You don't have to pay for it. You can download and use Joomla for free. It's a content management system. Um, the advantage of the content management system is you can update your website very easily. You know, if, if you want to update anything, I just email our IT person within minutes, it's updated. The website is updated. They don't have to do any, you know, a lot of hard work. Uh, actually, our website is being updated on a daily basis. Lots of, you know, I mean, new things are being added to the website. Our daily devotional goes up, our sermons, videos, sermon notes, uh, translated books. So, you know, there's things are being updated, our events, services, all that. So on a weekly basis, there are many updates being made to the church website. And because we're using a content management system, it's very, very easy to do. Okay. So when you want to build your church website or a ministry website, ask for this, you know, if somebody tells you, I'm going to build it from scratch, you say, no, I, I'd like to use a content management system. Uh, do, uh, are you familiar using Joomla or WordPress or something like that? You know, I would strongly recommend Joomla. It's one of the most robust and you can do a lot of things with it. So uh, use that. Okay. So what's the advantage of using a content management system? This, you can do lots of changes, customizations. Um, um, it's very easy to use. Uh, many developers are there who know how to use it. Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, if you want to do something by yourself, then you might use something like WordPress. Uh, and that's something you can learn to use yourself. Okay. Now, one important thing also I want to say is whoever you get to do your website, make sure that you retain full control of your website. You know, and uh, we have actually helped a couple of other Christian organizations who run into problems. You know, they hired a developer to do this work for them. And what did the developer do? He or he or she, the developer, kept full control of the website with the passwords and everything. So the organization, had no control of their own website because the developer get control. So now the you know the developer can play games if the developer wants. You know, so you need to be careful, right? Especially when you're using anybody, you know, even it may be somebody from your church, make sure the control of the website is in your hands as a leader or you know, or the church. That the login information, the registration is all done in the name of the church and uh, keep that in control. Otherwise, the developer or consultant, if they if they are the only ones who know the password to, you know, the whole system, uh, they can, you know, uh, they can be, they can take control of things. So, um, so we've had to step in and help some other organizations, you know, regain their website and do their work and so on. So, so just to keep that in mind, okay, when you are setting up your website. The next thing you would do uh, in setting up a website is to choose a domain name, right? That means what is the domain name people are going to type in to come to your website, okay? Some things to keep in mind is choose something that is short, 
right? For example, our domain name is apcwo.org. Now, why did we choose that and not all people's church bangalore.org? Now, if somebody has to type in all people's church bangalore.org, uh, it, it's, it's many characters they have to type, right? So, or, or all people's church world outreach, you know, dot org. Again, it's, it's a long name that they have to type, right? So, so we said, okay, let's just go with the first letters, A P C W O. All people search world outreach, A P C W O dot org. So it's very short. It's easy. Uh, of course, uh, it's something that they may take some time to remember. But once they do it, then it's very easy for people to remember apcwo.org. That's it. Right? And it should be related to the name of your ministry. So that's why APCWO. It's related to the name. Uh, and they can easy. So it should be easy to type, understandable words. And uh, it's a mnemonic. APCW is a mnemonic for the, uh, the long name. Right? So choose a name that's easy to remember you know, um, uh, and easy to spell. So if you, for example, if you choose a name that's a Greek name, uh, then people may not know how to spell it, right? Um, uh, uh, if, for example, if you say Kairos, uh, so if, for us who know the word, it's easy. It's K-A-I-R-O-S. But for somebody who doesn't know the name, you know, is it, C H A I R O S is it K A I R U S? You know, so they'll be confused by that. So choose something that's very, very simple, right? Um, so I'm just, you know, for example, if if your if your name of your church is Hope City Church Bangalore, then maybe you can see if H C C B dot O R G is available, Hope City Church Bangalore, or just Hope City, you know, something short and easy that you could see if it's available, right? And uh, so um, you can go to whois.com and search and see if that domain name is available. So if you go to whois.com, you can type in the domain name and see if it's available. If somebody else is used it, using it, uh, it'll give you other options. Right? And usually you would use a .org domain, so then they know it's a it's a nonprofit or religious organization. Um, uh, if it's um, if .org is not available, then it's okay to use .com or your country country specific, you know .in or .whatever. Uh, you can use it. Uh, there are other uh, extensions that are available. Uh, which you may use in case the main ones, .com, .org, or your country specific is not available, you may use others. But try to use, you know, because if, as a religious organization or a nonprofit, if you try to use .org, uh, that is uh, most advantageous. Okay. Now, uh, once you decide on your domain name, uh, you, know, you look it up in whois.com. Let, let's just, you know, uh, let me. I hope all of you are following me. Is it getting too technical? You, you are following me so far? Yes, Pastor. It's all right. Yeah. It's okay, right? All right. So, example. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me go back to sharing. All right. So, for example, uh, if you go to whois.com, uh, you can see if a particular domain name is available, right? So uh, let's say you're starting a new ministry and the name of your ministry is um, Hope City. Um, yeah, uh, I'm just making up something, okay. Hope City dot org. So if that's the name, so you search, uh, it'll tell you, you know, is Hope City there? Uh, okay, Hope City is unavailable. So somebody else has already taken that. 
hopecity.com is also unavailable, but it's telling you that hopecity.co.in is available, hopecity.io is there, and hopecity with other extensions uh, are there, right? So it's, it, it knows Bangalore Hope City. Yeah, I'm searching from Bangalore, so it's saying Bangalore Hope City is available, right? So if Hope City is not available, then what if you try to do Hope City uh, Bangalore.org, right? So head C Bangalore.org. So I'm trying to see if that's available. And uh, yeah, head C Bangalore.org is available, right? So that's interesting. So maybe you could use head C Bangalore.org, Hope City Bangalore or hcbangalore.in if you want to use that. Uh, and then, so you can then uh, select and then you have to register your name, right? That means um, you have to buy this name, right? You have to buy this domain name. It's $948 for one year or $10 for a year. So you have to buy this name and then, uh, you know, uh, so then, then you own it, right? Then you will own this domain name, HC Bangalore, okay? So that's important to do, okay? I, I just shared with you how to look it up, right? So like that, you can look up any name you want um, and, uh, and register it, okay? Let's go back to this. So uh, you choose a name that's easy, uh, that people can find easily, remember easily. Then you need to, uh, 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 of course, you need to buy that domain yourself. That means you, you, you will own it. And then you set it up for hosting and register your website domain name. Okay. That means this domain name that you have bought, uh, let's say hcbangalore.org, will be registered with uh, ICANN. So that's the Internet Corporation by sign names and numbers, right? Uh, so you registered with, with a hosting provider. I, I'll give you some names to do that, and they will the, the they will register your name, so that you know when anybody searches, they will find you online, right? So basically, how the internet works is when somebody searches on for uh, a name like hcbangalore.org. It, it first goes to the registrar. Uh, it's like a directory, a big directory. And then this is, oh, it's Bangalore. You need to go to this particular server. Okay, it's actually, there will be um, an, uh, an IP address. So this register will say, you need to go here, right? And that means where you are hosting your website. And then from there, they will get the information, like they will see your website. So when anybody searches, it actually goes, looks up in a uh, registry or registrar, and then that registrar points to where you are actually hosting your website, and that website is sent back to the person who is searching, right? So you need to register. Now, if you don't register, then they won't find it, right? So your hosting provider will usually do that for you. Now, some common that there are many, many hosting providers. Uh, you can use hosting providers that are specific to your country. We usually use uh, hostica.com or sometimes we host some of our things on uh, Amazon Web Services uh, and so on. So you could, you know, you could, the simplest thing to do is to use a hosting provider like Hostica or somebody else. Um, and then you pay them money, they will host your website. They will also register it with the uh, registrar. Right? So you so you need to buy your domain name, and then you can uh, um, put it on a hosting provider. If you want to simplify this whole work, uh, let me just share this with you. Once you know that HC Bangalore is available, what you can do is you go to your hosting provider. The, uh, you go directly to uh, the provider that you have chosen. 
and then you can actually uh, buy the domain name there. So when the advantage here is you buy it, they will host it, and they will all register it for you. So everything is done by Hostica. So if I do the same thing here, hcbangalore.org, uh, and I search, then it will tell me the same thing. It'll tell me that oh, it's see Bangalore.org is unavailable. Hmm. How come? Oh, maybe it's because I had selected it here. Okay, because I selected it, it's already. Um, I need to let it go. All right. Let me see now. Should become available. Not sure. Let's see. It's still unavailable. But anyway, uh, that's because I had selected it on the other website. But it's CB. Just doing something different. Let's see, Bengaluru.org should be available. Let's see, Bengaluru. Wonder why. Okay. All right. We we select some other name. Um. It's also unavailable. Okay. I'm not sure why these things are unavailable. Maybe they're all booked by others, others. But generally what will happen is if you search for a domain name here and uh, and then once you know you find a name that is uh, uh, available, you can buy it here. So they have Hope City India dot US. Anyway, um, you can actually buy it here. And uh, so it says hopecity.com is available. And these people will do everything for you, right? They will, okay, so it's available, right? Hopecityindia.com. So you can buy it here. You can buy it directly with your hosting provider. So they will host it. And they will, you know, you can buy the domain name that means you will own this domain name, Hope City India. Uh, they will register it for you and they will host it for you. That means uh, they will, you know, do the work of uh, registering it here and pointing it to their server because you're hosting it with them. They will do this work for you, right? So it's very simple then. So you don't have to worry about it. That once you buy it with a hosting provider, everything is taken care of, right? So, so remember, there are certain things you need to do. One is your domain name. Choose something that's your domain name. Choose something that's very easy. People will remember, very short, easy to type. Uh, it shouldn't have any complicated spelling, all of that. Second, uh, you need to uh, register it and host it. So the simplest thing is to go to a hosting provider and buy the name with them so they can, they'll buy it for you, they'll register it for you, and they will also host it for you. So that when anybody searches, they will find your website. Now, when you go about building your website, I just want to share some important things. Um, you got to think about what kind of website do you want to have, right? Uh, uh, don't and this is where you as a leader should give your input 
okay uh, don't let the developer or graphic person just decide that for you right because this is your ministry your church and uh, you are the one who knows correctly uh, what where you're trying to go in the ministry right so you need to tell them that hey i want this kind of a website if you're targeting young people of course you want something that's very contemporary um, and so on um, uh, if you are targeting a different kind of audience than a classic look a very standard look is fine the uh, other thing you also need to tell them is what are you trying to achieve with your website right uh, it your website could be informational that means it's just an online brochure or it could be for content that means you're providing resources you want people to keep coming back to keep using the resources that you're giving out uh, maybe it could be to raise support maybe to sell products or maybe to get people to sign up for events and conferences you know so these could be different objectives now for what we have done for APC is we said we want apcwr.org to be a, a, a repository, a, a place where people will come to find free resources, right? So of course it'll have information about the church. So to some extent, you know, it has information. Yes, it will have information on how people can give their tithes and offerings or contributions uh, we're not selling anything uh, we will also use it for people to you know sign up for events but our main motivation is this is it's apcw.org is like a, a central repository right so we have built our website like that so we have sermons right from 2004 so that's about 16 years worth of sunday sermons uh, with all our sermon notes, PowerPoint. Uh, so, so there is the video, there's the audio, there's the sermon notes, PDF, and there's a PowerPoint. And it's there, you know, like for the last, uh, since 2004, it's been collected there. And then uh, our books are there, free books. And then we're translating the books into languages. Then our daily devotionals are there. So really people keep coming back because they want resources and some of the trends we will see is usually on friday saturday the number of visits to our website will increase you know so it's almost like people are using it to prepare their sunday sermons and things like that you know we will see these trends happening uh, when we look at the statistics uh, and we see people coming from every you know different parts of the world but this is our objective in the website that we want people to come back and use these resources to build them up, build themselves up spiritually. Okay, so what is the objective? So APCW.org has been built as a resource center for spiritual Christian content, and we continue to develop that. So you may you need to think, okay, what what do I want to achieve with my church website? Okay, and then. Uh, uh, there are certain pages that are usual, you know, people, you, you have the home page. So on the home page, it is the first page people will come to. So it's the first impression they have about your church or ministry. Right? What do you want to tell them? Uh, and keep in mind that, you know, most people look at a web page maybe for 30 seconds, right? They'll come, they'll look at it, and they may immediately go to where they want to go to. Right? Maybe they're looking for, okay, how do I contact this church? Or, um, you know, who are the, who is the pastor here? Or things like that, right? So they look at a page maybe for 30 seconds. So in that 30 seconds, you need to make an impression. They need to get a good sense of who you are, what you are. So that's why if you look at our homepage intentionally, we've put everything there because uh, they will just scroll. They get a good idea of who we are, that we are doing many different things. We're catering for families, for children, for youth, um, for professionals. So intentionally, we've put a lot of that so that, you know, even if they scroll in 30 seconds, they just scroll up and down, they get a 
good feel of, okay, this church is catering for, you know, all, all a wide variety of people. Things like, oh, this church has free books and uh, music, you know. So everything is there. You know, in 30 seconds, even if they scroll just through our homepage, uh, they will get an idea of who we are. They don't have to click on anything else, right? From there, they can then dig further if they're interested. But even if they have 30 seconds and they just scroll to homepage, they'll get an idea of who the church is. Okay, So you've got to think through uh, on, on what you want to communicate to people when they come to your homepage. Then there are other things, you know, like, um, okay, people will want to know more about what is this church about, or I'm a new person here, how can I get connected, or what are your upcoming events, or who's, who are the people um, you know, the leading the church, or how can I contact you? Where are your Sunday services and locations? Okay. Um, so these are typical things that you need to make easily available, and people expect these things, right? They expect something that says contact us. Okay, that means you know they want your name, your address, your email ID, location. Uh, okay, they expect something of about us. Okay, who are you? You know, and so these things are usually expected when people come to a church or a ministry website. Some other things to keep in mind are uh, use graphics and colors that are very pleasant and that are relevant to the audience you're using, uh, reaching out to. Very important, there must be no spelling errors or errors anywhere. Okay, this is something very important you have to really work hard on this because you know it's easy for errors to come in or spelling mistakes to come in and so you have to work very hard because this leaves an impression on you know on on uh, how the church works right if there are errors and spelling mistakes and things like that it leaves a very bad impression especially if you're reaching you know uh, educated the you know the kind of people who these things matter, right? Uh, keep content updated. So, when if you have a website, the you know the, the the information must be current. There's no point, you know. Sometimes you go to a website and you see that okay, there this information is like from two years ago, uh, uh, and then that then that means they haven't updated it. Then there's no point in having that website. When you have links, all the links must be working and there must be no broken links. When they click on something to go somewhere, it should work and make it very easy for people to use, okay? Um, some things that you could do is uh, make, you know, try to, you know, one sim simple thing is you can let people share their information, like sign up for a database or register for upcoming events. So usually when, when once people like your church ministry, they'll want to do this and they will want to be part of your mailing list. And you can collect that information through your website. Uh, you can share your social media accounts. We will talk about this a little later. One last thing I want to mention, and maybe I will talk more about this next, next week, is even if you have a website, this number six is so important. That means your website should be discoverable online, right? That means if you have a website and uh, people can't find you, then it's almost like no point, right? So this is called search engine optimization. That means when people search, they should be able to find your website. And this is something you have to do very, very intelligently. So maybe I will explain this next week. Uh, a little bit more in depth. And this is something you must ask uh, the people who are managing your website to do for you, right? So as an example, suppose we go back online, you know? So let's say I want to, I'm, I'm in Bangalore and I want to find spirit-filled, spirit-filled churches. Okay, so think about, okay, when somebody comes to your city, uh, how will they search for your kind of church? Right? So, for example, APC. APC is a spirit-filled church. So usually when, when somebody's in Bangalore and they're searching, they would probably type spirit-filled churches in Bangalore. 
right? So when they time spiritual, what, what do they see? First year, first in the list, they see all people's church, Bangalore, right? And they see us on the map, right? So we are ranked number one here. And then if you go down here, our website is number one, right? So this doesn't happen by accident. You have to intentionally, uh, what is called a search engine, optimize your site so that, you know, people are most likely going to click on the first website that comes up, right? So when somebody searches for spirit-filled churches, they find us. What else would they search? Somebody may search for word-based churches, word-based church, or churches, or word-based churches. So you see some other churches have come up here, but we are number one here as a word-based church. If somebody searches for word-based church, we are number one in the list. Right, uh, so you know uh, they have to find out. So like that, you know, if people search, let's say, uh, you know, these are typical search phrases people will use. Somebody in Bangalore, they want to find a church, they would use this. Right. So this is how, if you design your website and search engine optimize it, they will find it. Right. So think about our Bible College. Right. So if people search for online Bible college, there are lots of other things. And you see APC Bible College comes in number one. Yeah. Right. These all are ads. I mean, these are paid. People have paid for this. These are ads. Ad here. This is an ad. This is an ad. This is an ad. But the first one without an ad is APC Bible College. Right? So we have intentionally, you know, search engine optimized it. So people search for online Bible college in this region, APC Bible College is number one. You know? So you think about another search phrase, free Christian books. Okay. See, if somebody searches for free Christian books, APC is number one in this region. Right? They will find us first. APC books, free Christian books, all people search Bangalore. They search for that phrase, we are number one, right? So uh, they will find us and they will, you know, go and use our books, right? So of course, there are other Christian books that are offered for free, but we're right here on top. And it's like, most likely they will click on this one first, yeah? So like this, uh, you know, uh, I think, uh, I don't know what rank we have here in free sermons. So in free sermons, of course, there is. these are all uh, US-based websites. They are numbered on top. But you see, we are listed on page one. We come here, uh, one, two, three, four, five. We are on fifth, rank fifth on page one. But these are really big websites. You know, these are Sermon Central, Life A, and... Bible study tools and so on. So these are really uh, global websites, big, very big ones. But out of that, we are number one here. Outside of that, in APCM, we are offering free sermons. Right. So uh, what I'm saying. Uh, so the, I, I'll stop here now. Uh, uh, just going back to this PDF. Is you have to optimize your website for search engine. So that when people search by certain phrases, uh, the goal is your website must come up within the first two pages. Because usually people will look in the first two pages. After that, they may not go to the third page, right? So how do you do it? You know, and uh, I will share more on this next week, okay? Uh, are you all uh, uh, with me so far? You you understood? Any questions so far? Okay. Right. So. No, Pastor. Uh, we are learning uh, new things. Interesting. Thank you. Okay. All right. Welcome. So uh, we will uh, continue this next week. 
So, so the goal is you build a website for your church or your ministry. Uh, there's a certain way to build a website. And your website must be searchable. Okay. And we'll explain how to do it next week. So that when people search, you know, by the terms, the, the phrases that you want to be uh, recognized by, then uh, they will find you. You know, you should come up within, your website must come up within page one or page two in your region, right? So when Google search does it, it does it by region. So in your part of the world, uh, it should come up there. Then they will find you. They'll come to your church or they will look at the information on your website and all that. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll continue this next week and uh, share some things. Okay. Um, can somebody close in prayer, please, before we go? Okay, okay, go ahead, thanks. Father Thomas. in Jesus, we, we thank you, we praise you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Father, as we learn in India, so very important in our days, Father, the technology. Thank you for uh, wisdom, knowledge of God to handle in proper way, to win many souls for the kingdom, Father. Help us to learn more and equip. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Dad. It's the only people using for different ways that we use for the to win many souls. We thank you, we praise you. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend, restful weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir.